Hey, it's Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through seven amazing tips and tricks that you should be using inside your Google Ads account in 2022. Now, some of these are pretty basic tips and tricks, and some of them are more advanced. So really, any campaign you may be running, some of these tips and tricks will apply for your account. Now, to start off, tip number one, turn off the search partners network. Now, this may be useful in some accounts, but a lot of accounts don't actually need the search partners network. If you have enough search volume, you're not going to need the search partners network and the reason for this is because the search partner network is allowing you to access all of the google ads partner networks now a lot of these networks don't bring in high quality traffic and they're not as monitored by google ads meaning they're more likely to have click fraud on it they are more likely to waste your money and really most accounts just should stay away from the google ads search partner network if you of course have search volume issues you may look into it even you can test it if you'd like uh, but most of the time we find the search partners network is just not suitable for a lot of accounts now if we were to turn off the Google search partner network it's pretty easy all you have to do is come into your actual campaign here we're gonna come down here to settings we're gonna come down here to networks and as you can see we have the search network here all we have to do is check this off to make sure there is no check mark in it and it says most advertisers include their ads on Google search partner networks and that's because most people don't know what they're doing so once we uncheck this all we have to do is hit save now tip number two is actually back here in the actual network section as you can see down here is the display network now a lot of people leave this on because they think they can get you know better results the issue with having a display network inside of a search campaign is that you're not really able to optimize it properly so if you want a display network it should be put inside of its own display campaign that makes sense that way you can optimize it you can adjust things if it's inside a search campaign you have no ability to do so so it's a complete waste of money for the most part so I always uncheck this even more so than the search network the search network can sometimes be used if you have really low search volume the display network we never use because it's just much better if you do it in its own campaign there's no reason to have it here inside of your Google Ads campaign this is one of the absolutes I, there's not many absolutes I have in Google Ads saying you can't absolutely do this or there's no and there's absolutely no time to ever do this the display network is one of the few things I never use and I just really don't like that Google automatically checks it off it's just not useful for most campaigns yes it does spend your ad spend and that's why Google likes it but I would always recommend and will save you a whole bunch of money in the long run now all we have to do is hit save and we are good to go. Now tip number two is found under ads and assets and this is actually going to be implementing all of your extensions possible that are relevant to your account. There are so many people out there that they just do not use extensions because one, it's quite a bit of work to actually create all of these extensions and it's just not that much fun and a lot of people don't like doing it. So I would recommend actually taking the time to do this and you'd be surprised at how much better results you're going to get and the reason for this is because extensions make your ad a lot bigger than all of the competition most of the competition is not going to take the time to one create these extensions and two actually test them and try to improve them and what happens when you actually do this is your click-through rate will skyrocket because your ad is much bigger than the competition and the bigger your ad is the more likely it is to be seen the more likely it is to be clicked on the higher the click-through rate generally the higher the quality score the higher the quality score the lower the cost per click the lower the cost per click the lower the cost per lead more leads leads to more account success and it's a big cycle and it's very important to actually create all the relevant ad extensions possible and if we can do this we're going to have a whole bunch more account success so please take the time to go into your account create these extensions yes I know it is difficult sometimes but there's a lot of resources out there that can help you do this so again please take the time to do this tip number four is found back here in the ad section now a lot of people I, I wonder if we actually have have a ad group here with only one ad we absolutely do and this is wrong we should have at least three ads in every single one of our ad groups the reason for this is it allows Google to a B test all of our headlines all of our descriptions all of our extensions everything all in conjunction and with literally dozens of headlines and descriptions and extensions Google is more than likely going to find a very good ad for you to actually run and show your actual potential customers this results in a higher click-through rate so it is very important to have three ads inside every single one of your ad groups this again will allow you to have a lot more account success it will allow Google's AI to find a winning headline winning description winning extension combination that will just put you ahead of the competition and make your account so much more successful now this is an overall strategy and I really think that a lot of people just generally don't like doing this and what I recommend 
is doubling down on the winners and getting rid of the losers. Now, I see so many people out there with five different campaigns. They got, you know, dozen ad groups, hundreds of keywords, and they are getting either terrible results or some decent results. But the issue is they really don't know what to do now. And they're, they're kind of stuck in limbo. And what you have to do is find the campaigns that are working. So say you had five campaigns. One of them is performing excellent the other four, not so much. What you need to do is, if there's no potential for making this campaign survive and thrive, you gotta kill it. You gotta get rid of these campaigns. So if you have shopping, video, display, uh, search campaigns, and really only the search campaign is getting results, or maybe it's just the video campaign getting the results, I would suggest killing off the other campaigns and investing more into the campaign that is producing results. And the reason for this is we want the lowest cost per lead and we want high quality leads. And the best way to do this is to really double down on these winning campaigns. And the same goes with ad groups and keywords. You may have 10 different ad groups, but only two are producing. I would much rather kill off the eight that aren't producing and invest that money back into the two that are producing. Again, you got to keep in mind search volume and making sure you have enough clicks and impressions. But if you do, you should really think about killing off the losers, keeping with the winners, investing more money in those winners, because you're going to get a lower cost per lead overall, and you're going to have a lot more account success. Same with the keywords. Keep the winners. Get rid of the losers. It will make your account so much better, and it will really put you above your competition where so many people feel fail to differentiate themselves and really fail to optimize their accounts over the long run. And that's what goes into making an account sustainable. You have to double down on the winners and get rid of the losers. The sixth tip I have for you is use landing pages. So many people will not use a landing page and this is a big mistake because you can optimize everything in Google ads perfectly. You can have the best campaigns, the best keywords, the best ad groups, the best ads, everything is awesome. But if you send all these potential customers to a crappy website, none of it matters. You're going to waste a whole bunch of money and you're going to be very upset with your results. A landing page fixes a lot of problems and it really can take a average campaign and really make it an amazing campaign just because landing pages allow you to convert at such a high rate that even if you're sending, you know, not great traffic, they can still convert at a very high rate and bring you a lot of leads. And just like this, there's so many statistics out there and you can easily take a conversion rate of you know five percent to twenty percent overnight from switching to a website to a landing page it, it's just it's amazing what landing pages do that's quadrupling your return that it's amazing you can produce four times the amount of leads just by switching from a website to a landing page it, it is amazing Everyone really should be using this. If you're in the service-based industry, landing pages are super important and so many people overlook them just because they think, well, I don't really need one. I have a really nice website. I spent a lot of money on my website. You're going to lose so much potential revenue because you're sending people to a website that is not converting that the actual money is going to be astounding. The amount of leads is going to be astounding just because you are losing so many potential customers just because you don't want to use a basic landing page. And I get the comment again and again, which is, well, your landing page looks simple. It doesn't look as nice as my website. It doesn't have any many features. And that's what a landing page is supposed to do. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to get your customer from point A to point B as quickly as possible, as easily as possible. We only give them the information they want and we want their email or we want their phone number. And a landing page is simple. It does that and it converts much better than a website in almost every single case. So please use landing pages if you're a service-based business. It will make you so much more money. Now our last trick of the day, it is match types. And match types really can make or break your account. And what I mean by a match type is if you come down to our search keywords here, you can see we have vinyl pools, fiberglass swimming pools. Some of them are paused, some of them are active. But as you can see here, match type. And what this means is the amount of leniency we're going to give Google for going after these keywords. Now, phrase match is what we really used to use. Phrase match and exact match, we used to pair them. Phrase match would essentially explore, find new keyword ideas, and exact match would really zone in and target the keywords we really wanted to go after, the really high converting keywords with very low cost per lead. Now, over the past six months, Google has redone their actual match type algorithm. And I don't like phrase match as much as a match type because it just, it's too lenient in my opinion. Can you 
do we still use it in some accounts? Absolutely, yes. But for most campaigns that are going to be starting, I really recommend only using Exact Match. And that's because it's really hard to mess up with Exact Match. If you put in fiberglass pool installation near me, HVAC services near me, fencing services near me, and you put in Exact Match, you're going to get search terms and your ads are going to pop up for very closely related keywords to that keyword. If you put it in phrase match or broad match, you're going to pop up for a whole bunch more. Now, broad match, you can really pop up for anything slightly related to this keyword, and it's astounding. And if you're really new to a actual campaign, you don't have the time to be going through thousands of search terms and adding them as negatives, especially if you're a one-man crew or whatever you are. Uh, if you don't have people going in there and, and making sure these negatives are implemented, uh, you're going to be wasting a lot of ad spend. Uh, that being said, you can also optimize them properly. So say Google figures out like, hey, I can getting this search term for really cheap. I should keep getting that keyword. But that keyword could be, you know, HVAC DIY or HVAC companies hiring or fencing companies hiring. This is not a keyword we want to go after. It shows no buying intent whatsoever. But Google understands that, hey, I'm getting a very cheap conversion. It's very, you know, the very low cost per lead. I want to go after that. And if you don't have someone in your Google account going after these specific search terms and adding them as negatives, Google is going to optimize for these keywords and you're just going to get terrible leads. So it is very important to actually set your match type correctly. I generally recommend everyone start off with exact match. And then as your account expands, you can try phrase match, maybe broad match if you were like really, really low on search volume. But for most people, exact match is the way to go. And I would really recommend most accounts start with it. Now a word from today's sponsor. If you're interested in building campaigns lightning fast, and I mean in under 50 minutes, you've got to check out our Google Ads Automatic Campaign Builder. It comes with headlines, it comes with descriptions, it comes with literally everything you need to build a campaign in under 50 minutes. We use it for every single one of our accounts. We absolutely love it. And really, if you're going to be building more than one campaign and you want to save yourself a whole bunch of time, not having to manually copy and paste accounts, you want it automatically done for you, this is the tool for you. The link is down below in our little link tree thing there. It's awesome. Check it out. It's an amazing tool. Again, we use it for every single one of our campaigns and it saves us so much time inside Google Ads. Now that's it for our seven amazing tips, tricks inside Google Ads for 2022. If you have any tips and tricks, share down below. I'd love to hear them. Uh, if you have any comments about Google Ads, the tips and tricks I recommended in this video, again, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to respond to you. I really do enjoy responding to these comments. It's really fun for me. If you want to join our Discord server where we talk about Google Ads, if you have any questions, it's in the link tree as well. I really like that community. It's really awesome. Other than that, though, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.